No, I, you know, I would, I have to say, I'd be pretty surprised if it turns out there was a god. But in any case, what does that even mean? Just some sort of higher power that's capable of genetic engineering and, and creating planets and universes. That that's really just an engineering problem. Well, so this is one of these great mysteries. You know, why is the universe the way it is? Um, you know, is there? Does that mean there's a god? Does that mean there's multiple universes and ours is just one? Uh, we just don't know. We don't have an answer to that. And, you know, the multiverse argument I like, but I like it more on a sort of intuitive emotional level because I think it makes sense in the history of science how we expand our horizons out larger and larger. And now that our universe is just one of many makes sense to me, but there's no evidence for that. But neither is there evidence for God as the creator of this universe and other universes or whatever. So we're just left with a mystery. I don't Hello, Bezel Triple Three. That was Michael Shermer discounting God and sharing his belief in the multiverse. It's become the darling of atheists and skeptics as a way to sidestep the all-powerful personal creator and yet provide a reason for the astronomically minuscule odds of a universe such as ours having all the requirements and fine-tuning to support carbon-based life. What is this theory of a multiverse? There may be other worlds out there. Universes, budding off other universes. Where there could be an exact copy of our solar system, our Earth, and each one of us. Where everything's pretty much the same, or maybe, maybe only just slightly, slightly different. different. It's the notion that if you have an infinity of universes, there would have to be exact replicas of our universe and our solar system and our world and even you. In fact, for every decision you have made, somewhere out there, you have made the opposite decision in a parallel universe. Here's an example of the implications of this notion. In the universe we live in, the men behind 9-11 managed to avoid detection. But, for scientists who believe in parallel universes, there are many other real worlds where the men are caught. Now I want you to take note of the anti-Christian bent of this National Geographic program. The same men who are perpetrators in our universe, in others, are just ordinary tourists. And instead, young Christian extremists are the plotters. Christian extremists? Um, well, okay. A Christian extremist, like the Muslim and the Koran, would take the Bible's commands seriously. So what would a Christian extremist do on an airplane, even in another universe? Would they kill the infidel? No, Jesus never commanded anyone to kill an infidel. Jesus did, however, command Christians to proclaim the good news of salvation through his cross. So at the very most, he or she would share the gospel of Jesus with anyone who would be willing to listen to them on that airplane. Anyways, let's see what the implications are if there are indeed parallel universes out there. There will be exact replicas out there. You are guaranteed to find matter arranged in just the same way. On these Earths, there are exact copies of each of us down to the last molecule. And if one day someone invents a way to travel much, much faster than the speed of light, we could even meet them. Our two worlds are inextricable. If one side dies, we all die. So I've torn holes in both the universes. And they lead here, to this room, a bridge, so that we can begin to work together to fix... And what of the Big Bang? I thought that was supposed to be the beginning of it all. The Big Bang. The moment our own universe was born. Temperatures reached unbelievably high levels, and all of the energy needed to make our universe erupted from a single explosion. Alan Guth wrote a convincing and detailed description of the event and he did it with the help of bubbles. Bubbles, 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 falling from the top. Come on, let's go, yeah! Bubbles, 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 we can help them pop. All right, here we go, pop! He suggested
suggests that for a very brief period, just after the Big Bang, the early universe inflated super fast like a bubble. In that brief moment of inflation, the building blocks of our universe formed. All the matter in our universe came about from the inflation of a cosmic bubble? We have no way of knowing how big the universe is. As far as we can look, the universe just seems to keep on going. Uh, so one possibility is that the universe never ends. It might be infinite out there. Okay, so there might not be a multiverse, but rather one infinite universe? Is that what he said? Well, what I think he means by that is that there's one big daddy universe from which many other universes spring up out of, and that big daddy universe is infinite. Many scientists now argue that the energy to create the Big Bang must have existed before our universe began. Okay, guys, let's move this thing now. In a time and space they call the multiverse. Throw the ball. No one is sure what the multiverse looks like. Um, no one is sure if there's a multiverse. Well, of course, it's a theory, a hypothesis based not on scientific observation, but rather on faith. This is a way to visualize the multiverse. All the hills and the valleys represent the end distribution in the multiverse. I'm sorry there, she said the hills and the valleys represent the energy distribution in the multiverse. Well, okay then, where did this energy and resulting matter come from? You see, the multiverse philosophy does not answer the question of how it all began. And the bolts represent the possible, the potential initial universes that can grow and, and look like ours. Now, the obvious problem here is that nothing grows from nothing. We know that. <laughs> to have a plant, you need a seed and soil and water and sunlight. So from where are these baby universes coming from? Where each of these stretched bubbles represents a universe as large and complex as ours. Each hole represents the moment of a Big Bang. But in truth, everything about it is unfamiliar. We certainly do not have a very clear idea of, of what this multiverse that we talk about might look like. Uh, no idea. Looks to me like you have an idea. See, the Big Daddy multiverse is a giant air popcorn popper. But still, you need the kernels and hot air and electricity. Where does that stuff come from? We don't know whether those other worlds, those other universes outside our own, if they are even part of the same space-time as our universe. We used to think the Big Bang was a huge event. But in the multiverse, the Big Bangs are probably happening all the time. Some of them look like our universe, some others don't. But the main point is that there is nothing special about our universe since there are so many other universes. Ah, and there it is. This is why the multiverse idea is so inviting to the atheist. All this complexity and fine-tuning that allows human life to exist is simply the result of an infinite number of universes out there, and ours just happen to form in such a way as to support carbon-based life. No creator needed, no grand designer or architect. Nothing special about our universe, which means there's nothing special about our solar system or our planet or you, for that matter. In some sense, we're all guaranteed in this strange way immortality. A, an exact copy of us, identical to us now in every way, will go on living essentially forever. Eternal life. Infinite realities. Science takes us on a strange journey. Wow, even when postulating the non-scientific possibility of a multiverse, the need for something that transcends this life is exposed. Although I don't see how unrelated copies of you continuing to exist in a universe other than our own after you die is of much consolation. I mean, really, big deal. You're dead. You know, I get bashed by atheists for believing the stories found in Iron Age and first century documents that really do exist. And yet many atheists like Michael Shermer are willing to believe this fanciful tale of parallel universes and spontaneous undesigned air popcorn creation. 
The Bible tells us that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. This God, who was revealed in the rest of the Bible, is so much more than what Michael Shermer described. No, I, you know, I would, I have to say, I'd be pretty surprised if it turns out there was a God. But in any case, what does that even mean? Just some sort of higher power that's capable of genetic engineering and, and creating planets and universes? That, that's really just an engineering problem. No, Michael. From the Bible's point of view, God is an infinitely powerful, infinitely personal, infinitely wise creator who at a certain time in human history humbly laid aside his majesty and took on our humanity, clothing himself with flesh. The God who created this universe and all that is within it became an infant who sucked at the breast of his mother. This is the only God there is who dwelt among us in the person of Jesus, the Christ who is the ultimate and final revelation of God to humanity. The writer to the Hebrews, written around A.D. 60, says this about Jesus. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the power of his word. After making purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become much more superior to angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. So I ask you, what's it going to be? Will you put your faith in an impersonal multiverse where you are less than insignificant? Or trust in the God who has revealed himself in human history so that you might be restored to a right relationship with him? Who you going to call?